Welcome to the SVG TV Evening News and Sports for Wednesday, October 2nd, 2013. I'm Carol Cato with the details. The officials at the International Airport Development Company are confident that the airport will be finished by the end of next year with the terminal building 92% completed. Yesterday, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, along with members of the media, took a tour of the construction site at Argyle to get an update on the project. IADC's Chief Executive Officer Rudy Matthias has confidently stated that the Argyle International Airport will be completed by the end of 2014. Speaking at a tour of the construction site on Tuesday, Dr. Matthias says they have been provided with sufficient amount of monies to complete the project and the contractors are working tirelessly to meet the deadline. And when they hand over the terminal building to us, we're going to start the retrofitting of the terminal building, meaning to put in the conveyor belts, the desk, the immigration counters and so on. And that work would extend, of course, into next year. And uh, our idea is to try to get the retrofitting of the terminal done by mid next year as well, so that with God's grace and help, we should have the construction work completed by mid next year. After that, of course, we will be testing the equipment, and then our dear Prime Minister can say, let the planes land. Dr. Matthias also outlined that the pavement work has commenced for the runway. We are doing the base lane, which has extended up to nearly two kilometers, 1,900 meters of the runway. The runway is 2,743 meters, and we are lane based right now up to 1,900 meters or thereabouts. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, why we haven't gone beyond 1,900 is because we still have to do some work on the river. As you know, we have to create some culverts. We are going to build a series of culverts, five parallel culverts we are going to construct to carry the river, the Yambo River, under the runway. Meantime, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsal said the government and the IADC are working closely as it relates to the management structure of the airport. He said they are also doing ongoing training in a number of areas to ensure that everything is in place come 2014. Then insofar as the planes are concerned, Glen Beach chairs a committee and we had a meeting um, just about three weeks ago to get a report as to the planes out of the US and um, Canada and Britain. Um, in respect of the arrangements for them to land at Argyle International Airport. The construction of the International Airport commenced some five years ago and is the biggest capital project undertaken here to date. Kristen John Dean reporting for SVG TV News. Meanwhile, we hear that the equipment used on the Argyle International Airport project will be put to good use to assist with the road rehabilitation work here. The roads should be As SVG joins the rest of the world in observing Breast Cancer Awareness Month, women here are being reminded of the importance of breast care in order to lessen the chances of developing breast cancer. With one in every nine Vincentian women expected to develop the disease, President of the SVG Medical Association, Dr. Rosalind Ambrose, is emphasizing the need for women to adopt good breast care practices. Women should do a self-examination at least once a month, preferably after the period for those women who still have periods. Um, breast cancer is also relatively high in the postmenopausal women, and so we encourage them as well to look at the nipples, look at any skin changes, any changes in size and tone and so on the breast, and uh, pay attention to these things just once a month. Things that will um, impact some families because of their family history. You know, if there's a uh, mom, an aunt, a sister, someone particularly on the maternal side who has had breast cancer, then your risk factor is much 
In commemoration of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, the Medical Association has designated this Friday, October 4th, as Pink Cap Day. Stressing on the insignificance of the color pink, Dr. Ambrose made it clear that breast cancer is not restricted to women. It's not singular to women, okay, because men will and can, in fact, also develop breast cancer. Smaller percentage, but it does exist. Feel a lump, you see color changes, you see dimpling, any changes in the skin and anywhere on the breast, um, you should really check it out. Meanwhile, newspaper columnist Bassi Alexander is urging men over the age of 40 to conduct regular tests on their prostate so that early signs of cancer can be detected. Alexander, a cancer survivor, told SVGTV News that men should not be reluctant to check their prostates. For the men who are afraid, go the, the rectum test. No doctor enjoys doing that. No doctor enjoys doing that. And it is not, it is not, not painful. Yes, it might be a little uncomfortable, but it is for your own benefit to do that test once. And then the doctor will tell you, go, don't come back, everything is normal. And that is what you need to do. Diet, eat properly. It will keep your cholesterol down, keep your sugar down, keep your pressure down. And exercise, and you don't have to worry about prostate and breast cancer and so on. In the story that has pretty much been the talk of the town in the last few weeks, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez is reminding persons that the Ministry of Education is not in control of the management of the St. Joseph's Convent, Kingstown. At a, re at a recent media conference, PM Gonzalez commented on the legal saga facing the all-girls institution involving one of its students. He made it clear that the government only provides a level of support to the Catholic-run school, and therefore, the Ministry of Education is not in a, in a position to determine who stays and who goes to the school. There's a protocol with the assisted schools, but the determination as to whether a child should be remain in a school or not is not the determination of the ministry. But clearly, the ministry has an obligation to provide a school for a child if a school for whatever reason says we don't want to have this child on september 23rd and 24th teachers of the school staged a two-day protest action against a court order for the reinstatement of a student who was transferred from the institution reportedly because of misconduct Prime Minister Gonzales told journalists that the Attorney General has filed an injunction to stop the court order for the students to return to school. He said the matter to be heard on Friday would not be done by Justice Frederick Bruce Lyle as he has ex excused himself from the case. Justice Bruce, Bruce Lyle's wife is on the board at the girls at the St. Joseph's Convent. So upon that realization Probably if he had realized it at the time, you know, he, he, may, he, he probably would have recused himself. But that's why I understand that, why it has gone to the other. Meanwhile, Dr. Gonzalez says he has heard some of the criticisms in relation to his newly appointed senator, lawyer Jomo Thomas, leading the case for the student. And according to the PM, he sees nothing wrong with it. A citizen feels that it, she has a grievance and that she wants that grievance to be legally redressed. She goes to a lawyer of her choice, which is her right. The lawyer puts the matter in court. The lawyer doesn't determine cases. He's the conduit to go to the fount of justice. Seven finalists have been selected to compete in this year's Courts Primary Schools Reading Competition. They are Janie's Providence of the Bekwe Anglican Primary, Anya Kwashi of the Calico Anglican, Daniel Kwashi of the Gome Methodist, Saviola Blake of the Diamonds Government, Kristen Barber, St. Mary's Roman Catholic, Bokim Henville, Kingstown Prep Preparatory School, and Melissa Kwashi of the Leu Government. The finalists, the finals that is, will take place on Thursday, October 10th at French's House, beginning at 9.15 a.m. 